Hi fellow artists, this is Miss Ferguson. In this lesson, I will show you how to use a regular pencil to create a realistic graphite drawing through hatching and cross hatching. Before we get started, I'm going to answer a question you're probably thinking. What the heck is a bongo? Isn't that a drum? Well, yes, it is, but it's also a species of large antelope native to Kenya. According to the Fossil Rim Wildlife Center, whose website I have linked in the description of this video, the bongo is a shy coppery red antelope with white stripes. Most active at dusk and dawn, they will emerge at night to visit salt lakes. I was inspired to create a drawing of this animal because of a story my mom told me growing up about waking up early to see the bongo when she visited Kenya. Please visit the Fossil Rim Wildlife Center's website to learn more about this critically endangered species and other animals in need of conservation efforts. They're not sponsoring this video, but because I used an image of one of their mountain bongos as a reference, I wanted to give them a shout out and hopefully some web traffic. If you're not a high school student, or specifically a student of mine, feel free to skip ahead past this part. This is the part of the video where I explain how what I'm teaching you here connects to educational standards and objectives, which are, respectively, what knowledge or skill sets our state legislation expects you to have, and what you will specifically learn in this lesson in order to get there. These standards are from the updated 2019 Missouri Visual Arts Grade Level Expectations, or GLEs. Standard 1. CR2A2. Through experimentation, practice, and persistence, demonstrate acquisition of skills and knowledge in a chosen art form. Standard 2. CR1B2. Choose from a range of materials and methods of traditional or contemporary artistic practices to plan works of art and design. Now, let's talk about objectives. These are our goals for what you should be able to do by the end of this lesson if you put its principles into practice through enough structured experimentation and projects. Objective 1. You will be able to recall, identify, and or illustrate the following vocabulary words. Value, contrast, hatching, and cross-hatching. Objective 2. You will be able to apply your understanding of value and mark making to create a variety of values and textures. Objective 3. You will be able to create the illusion of complex forms in a 2D drawing. Now, let's go over the list of art supplies you'll need for this project. I designed this lesson and the project that goes with it to be as cheap and accessible as possible with materials you may already have at home. I don't know if you've heard, but we're living through some unprecedented times and you may not own a full set of different grades of graphite pencils or have access to electric erasers, let alone be able to go to an art supply store. Those things are all nice, but they're not necessary to create a beautiful piece of artwork and sharpen your hand-eye coordination and observation skills. I'll go over more in-depth graphite drawing techniques in a different lesson. To complete the kind of project I'm showing to you in this lesson, you will need a regular pencil, an eraser, which can be your pencil eraser, a pencil sharpener, and two pieces of paper. You probably also will want to have some masking tape and a piece of scrap paper. A piece of newspaper will do. The first thing you will want to do is find a subject. This can be a photo or something you see right in front of you. For this project, I took an image from the Fossil Rim Wildlife Conservation website and made it grayscale using the software on my phone so I could see the different values in the image more easily. Next, take your first piece of paper, a cheap piece of sketch paper if you have it, and create a simple drawing of your subject. This is not the final drawing and it will not involve any shading. You're just making yourself a map of where you're going to shade eventually. Let's take a break from our subject for a moment and create a value scale. This exercise will help you to practice varying pressure with your pencil and creating different values, a range of which you will need in order to create a realistic drawing with all the appropriate lights, darks, and midtones that you would see in reality, or at least if reality were grayscale. I'm not going to go over direct observation drawing techniques in this lesson. That's for a different time. First, let's define value. Value is an element of design that refers to the relative lightness or darkness of a certain area. You may have been asked by me or another art instructor to create a value scale before, and if so, you know what's coming next. Creating a value scale helps you practice changing the amount of pressure you're using on your pencil so you know how much pressure you'll need to use to create lighter or darker areas of your composition. It's good to create a value scale with at least five squares and start with the darkest value, pressing fairly hard until it's as dark as you can make it. Then, in the next square, use a bit less pressure and fill it completely. Repeat this process until the last square is as light as you can make it without leaving it blank. 
process I am using here to fill up these squares is called hatching, or cross-contour shading. Hatching is the process of making many parallel lines to simulate the light and shadow of a three-dimensional object. In drawing, this helps to create the illusion of depth in a two-dimensional or flat space. Now that we've warmed up our hands and pressure variation skills, let's get back to our drawing. The fourth task we need to do to complete this project is called a graphite transfer. When I learned how to do this in high school, it blew my mind. Now, you don't have to do this. You can just shade on top of the original sketch you drew on your first piece of paper, but I like to do this when I want a really nice clean line drawing to start from when I want to make a realistically shaded image. There is such a thing as graphite paper that is covered in graphite powder on one side, but we're going to do it cheapo, do-it-yourself version. Still got your sketch? Turn it over and use the side of your pencil to scribble large blocks of value over areas on the other side that have lines. When you think you've got a layer of graphite underneath each line of the sketch, turn your paper drawing side up and scribble side down. Place your second clean sheet of paper underneath and position your sketch where you'd want it to be if it were on the second piece of paper. Finally, use something, here you see me using masking tape, to secure the top of the sketch to the drawing surface. Finally, take your pencil, a ballpoint pen works too, and pressing down firmly and smoothly, go over all the lines of your sketch that you want to keep. Flip your sketch up occasionally to see something magical happening. The lines are transferring to the paper below. I like to keep my transfer lines pretty light because I can always go over them later and they're easier to erase if necessary. Now it's time to start getting down to business of shading. You can start wherever you like, but it's important to remember that you should always have your reference at hand. You should be constantly checking the values you're creating against the values shown in the image or what you see in front of you if you're drawing from life. It won't be realistic if you stray too much from the real thing and start drawing what's in your head, which deteriorates quickly every time you look away from your reference. Everybody goes through the process of settling into a drawing differently. I tend to go for the darkest parts of the image first. I'm not sure why. I also tend to go for the major features like the eyes, nose, and ears. You can kind of see me getting annoyed with myself here for jumping back and forth so much and trying hard to focus on one area at a time, but it doesn't really work for me. That attempt to focus and shade each area completely usually doesn't work for me for a long time. I hop back and forth like crazy. Whatever your methods are don't really matter, as long as you keep going and finish it eventually. Go at your own pace and do it however you feel you can complete it best. Another important part of the graphite drawing process is, well, protecting your drawing from yourself. What I mean by this is that the natural oil from your hands will smudge the graphite permanently into the paper if you rest your hand on it. Ever worked on a drawing for a while and noticed that the side of your hand comes away covered in graphite? Me too. An easy and cheap way to prevent this from happening is to place a piece of scrap paper under your hand as you draw. This may still smudge the paper a little, but it won't be permanent because the paper, unlike your hand, isn't oily. On that note, never use your fingers to smudge or shade a drawing on purpose if you don't want those smudges to be permanent. Always use a paper stump or a paper towel for erasable and cleaner blending. I'll talk more about those in a different video as there are more advanced techniques and materials. When I began this drawing, I was thinking I would complete the whole thing with hatching. However, the farther I got into the process, the more I realized I would need to supplement my hatching with cross-hatching. Cross-hatching is the process of making many lines that cross one another to simulate the light and shadow of a three-dimensional object or space. Basically, you hatch one way, then hatch over it a different way to create a darker value. The reason I combined cross-hatching with regular hatching in this drawing is simple. The bongo's hide has hair growing in lots of different directions, and keeping my lines going in one direction throughout wouldn't just take forever, it would also look really weird. Remember, it's okay to have your plans go sideways when you're working on an art project. Mistakes are part of the process, and you learn more from those than you do from doing things exactly the way you planned. What I learned, or got a refresher on, I guess, I know I knew this at some point but probably forgot, was that creating realistic looking hair basically eliminates the possibility of drawing with unidirectional lines or cross contour shading only. Anyway, you'll notice that I start light and get darker with most areas I address in this drawing. This means less erasing and less frustration down the line. One of the most important things you can do when drawing is using contrast effectively. Contrast is a principle of design that means the arrangement of opposite elements and effects. 
For example, you can contrast light and dark colors, smooth and rough textures, or large and small shapes. Contrast is used to create variety, visual interest, and drama in an artwork. Here, I use varying pressure on my pencil to create contrast between light and dark values so you can see where the light hits different parts of the animal's body. Contrast also helps your eyes to move around the artwork so you notice all the different parts. I also tend to draw lines that go in the direction of the hair of the animal or in the direction that the animal's body is foreshortened away from me in the image. Basically, foreshortening is when an object or view seems closer as an effect of perspective or the angle of vision. In other words, the rest of the bungo's body is farther away from me than the front, so I make lines that seem to reach backward when shading it on the right side of the drawing. I'm going to let the video run now so you can see the whole drawing process from start to finish. Remember, the video shows my drawing process sped up by as much as 30 times in places. This drawing took about 3.5 to 4 hours to do from start to finish, not including the sketch and research. Please feel free to slow it down as needed and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'd appreciate a like if you feel like leaving one. This is Ms. Ferguson signing off. Thank you so much for watching.